Always fun. Get everything done. Well, we're already in week six. <clears throat> Feels like we meet once a week. And I have a lot of different websites to show you for training and a lot of stuff about Python. First, let's watch this video about the history of Python, the programming language we're going to use. And it is five and a half minutes, so I don't think it should be too awfully boring. It has a lot of good comments. You can tell I haven't watched the whole thing because I wanted to be surprised Today, with you guys. Python stands as one of the world's most popular programming languages. It ranks the number five on the TOB index and can safely be named the number one scripting language, as no other scripting language is ranked higher. But it wasn't always this way. So how did Python come about? Python isn't exactly a new concept. It was conceptualized by a man named Guido Van Rossum in the late 1980s as a successor to the APC programming language. Another programming language created at Van Rossum's workplace, CWI, the National Research Institute for Scientific Research in the Netherlands. Much like ABC, Python wasn't aimed at system programming and was designed to be easy to learn. But unlike ABC, Python included support for exception handling and was originally targeted at the Amoba operating system. Now, the Amoba operating system was a time-sharing system built by the Amsterdam University, which like time sharing itself, has fallen out of favor. But Python lives on. Van Rossum started the actual implementation of Python over the Christmas holidays in 1989. It wasn't actually named after the snake, by the way. It was named after the British TV show Monty Python's Flying Circus. He continued working on it privately until February of 1991, when the first version, 0 0.9.0, .0, was released. Python included many features of the language, like classes, functions, and data types, such as lists, dictionaries, and strings, in addition to the aforementioned exception handling. Version 1.0 of Python came about in January 1994. One of the most notable new features was increased support for the functional style of programming, with tools such as Lambda, Map, Filter, and Reduce. Interesting to note, these new features weren't actually developed by Van Rossum, and instead were developed by a list hacker who missed them and submitted working patches. Van Rossum would continue working on Python at CWI until 1995, after the release of Python 1.2. After that, Van Rossum crossed the Atlantic, finding a job with the Corporation for National Research Initiatives in Reston, Virginia. While working at the CNRI, Van Rossum launched an initiative to make programming more accessible to the masses, called Computer Programming for Everyone. Python was the perfect language for Van Rossum to use for promoting computer programming accessibility because the language is easy to learn and concise. It was also more high level than many of the other popular programming languages during the 90s, meaning users did not need to know as much about computers to get work done with it. Today, computer programming for everyone is no longer an active initiative. That does not mean that Python is not one of the most popular programming languages for beginners to learn. It most certainly is very popular as a first programming language, and this can be still attributed to the same facts that made it so attractive to new programmers during the 1990s. In 2000, the entire Python team left the CNRI and moved to BeOpen.com, an open source software startup, to form the BeOpen Python Labs team. Python was sitting at version 1.5 at this time. CNRI requested that a version 1.6 be released there, summarizing the development to the point that the team left. This meant that two versions of Python were being developed simultaneously. Python 1.6 was being developed at the request of CNRI, while version 2.0 was being developed at theopen.com. The most significant and important change in 2.0 wasn't about the code or language itself, but the way it was developed. Up until this point, Python was developed in a relatively closed fashion. With 2.0, Python became more like a standard open source project that would have a life after Guido. <coughs> Python was moved to SourceForge, granting CVS access to more people and providing an easy way to submit patches and bugs. The Python Labs team only released 2.0 at the now defunct theopen.com. By version 2.1, they had moved to Digital Creations, now part of Zope, an object-oriented web application server written in Python. 
The next major revision to Python was Python 3.0, sometimes called Python 3000. It wasn't backwards compatible with 2.0. Instead, Python 3.0 opted to focus on removing duplicative constructs and modules, stating that there should be one, and only one, obvious way of doing things. Version 3.0 was released in December of 2008. The Python developers knew that not everyone would be ready to switch to Python 3 right away, and continued working on Python 2. Python 2.6 was released along with Python 3.0, and Python 2.7 with 3.1. Now, Python 2 is no longer receiving major updates. Users are encouraged to move to Python 3 and support for Python 2.7 will end in 2020. So that's the story of Python. It's come so far from where it started, and it's still developing. Python faces a huge struggle, with the 2020 deadline for 2.7 support quickly approaching and still so many code bases not compatible with Python 3. However, I think the language will be able to push through this tough period. What do you think? Drop a comment below and let me know. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you can, please share it so your friends, family, and distant relatives can see it too. I like it for him because he did good. So some boring stuff. But the fact that he talked about all those different releases is really important because this is the issue with Python. Grammar is spelling Stop talking. But if you want to write essays, that is... So, you guys are going to run into this right away, this release problem. So, I'm glad he was talking about it. Whenever we first started teaching Python here at OTC, there were version 3.0s available. And we found that version 2.7 was still the most widely used Python version. One of the training websites that we're going to look at at Code Academy, as far as I know, the last time we they were still teaching that version. We've since then switched to 3.6 because it's become more popular in those two years and it's what you guys need to learn because you need to learn the newest version and the code bases he mentioned has to migrate over to this new version because the older 2.7 version is not going to be available anymore. So if you look at your start menu and you just type PY for the Python stuff, which hopefully it'll pop up and you'll see you'll see that we're running Python 3.6. So if you want to download it at home, you want to get that, that same version. So it's good that he starts out with this version mess right off the bat, <laughs> so that you know it's a big deal. So 3.6 is the one that we're using here. There's not very much differences, especially with the code that we'll do. You'll see, I'll show you right away today the, the little small differences. So it's not a big deal, but it's just a lot makes your life a lot easier if you have the same version. It's here. So <clears throat> we see this Python stuff there on our computers. What should we try? Let me try. Um, do you guys have this one that says py run command? Let's try it. Ah. So let's notice what that looks like. <coughs> giving us a little kind of like a console screen and this is the Python interpreter <coughs> so he mentioned that word script a script is a list of commands so if I if I created a batch file to run on DOS that would be a script whenever we create a list of Python commands they're really going to be a script <coughs> a script is something that has to be interpreted as it's being executed if you look at a .exe file, like you've got a game and you're running the .exe file, that's an executable file. That file has been compiled already into a language that is executable by the computer, so it doesn't need an interpreter to be running along with it. So we see these kinds of languages like Python, our scripting languages, we have to have the Python interpreter installed on our computer to run a Python script. We can't just grab it on some machine and go. So what can we do here? We're sitting here with these little um, greater than symbols as our prompt. We can actually interact with Python right here. So let's say we wanted to do like an addition problem. What's three plus four? I can type that in and I'll actually get the response back from the interpreter. So try it, try just some different things. I'll do 
75 times 47. Well, that's a big number. What's one of those, oh, that modulus command? That one gets everybody all the time. Six, let's see, I'll do 15 modulus 2. That's what give me one, right? Yeah, because I remember that's the remainder. So I can try things, just enter code, enter these Python commands. These are really just math, right? I'm kind of using Python as a little calculator here. But I can type any Python command I want to here at the command interpreter, and it'll run it, it'll execute it, and it'll give me back the results. So that's handy. But a lot of times we would like to actually save these commands in a file so we can run them again, right? Well, let's try a few more though before we get off and look at a file. I want to print out a message. Let's use the print command. And the print command looks just like, a lot like what you guys have been using as a write command in our pseudocode. So it just outputs something to the screen. Now, whatever I want the print command to output needs to be within parentheses. And if I wanted to output a string, of course, that string needs to be within double quotes. So I'm going to print out this message, Merry Day. How's that? It's not really Christmas. I'm, I'm a little bit behind. But let's just try running that. Ah, oh, there it is. How about I'll do Hello World. That's a more common one, right? And we can save that in our file. So this print command is actually the command that's different between 2.7 and 3.6. So our version of Python, 3.6, we have parentheses <coughs> around what we want to print. If you encounter the older version of Python, there won't be the parentheses. That's the only difference, but it can get you. So, well, I'll remind you, don't worry. So we're ready. It looks like we're ready to write a program. Let's save a file. I could do it here, but it wouldn't work very well. Notice I don't really have many menus in this Python interpreter. So I'm going to type exit. And it says, oh, use exit with parentheses or control Z plus return to exit. So I'll type exit with parentheses. because. It's a function, and it'll close that console screen. Okay, so when I look at my start menu, there are several things that have to do with Python. I'm going to search now for ID. So idle is the editor that we're going to use to start with. And idle actually comes with Python, so it will automatically be installed on your computer if you install Python. So let's see some things here that we've seen so far. We're using Python 3.6. We're going to use idle as our editor. I'm going to write these things down because I'm going to make you go to a bunch and jump around to a bunch of places. So let's open idle. Now, when you first open idle, you're going to see again that Python command interpreter. So it looks just like it, except now I've got a white background with black text instead of the black text and white background. It looks the same. So let's create a new Python file. I want to use my file menu, and I'm going to choose new file. Yes, sir? Is yours broken? Is it broken? I'm surprised that we only have one. Anybody else trouble? Or is it working okay for everybody else? It's very quirky. It's a bit 
And as we save files and things, we want to make sure that we don't put them into the Python folder. That's what happens. That's how Python gets broken on the computers. So let's say here is my file that I just created. Help our person who just came in get that new file created. Now I want to save it. So before I type any code, I'm going to save this file. I'm going to save it to my H drive in my 120 folder where I normally save my stuff and I've created an SP19 folder. In this very first program is going to be hello world. And if you notice here on idle, it says that it's going to save this file as type.py. It really doesn't. And if you don't click a .py, it won't work right. You're not going to get color coding and stuff in idle. So if you ever are not seeing colors, it's because we didn't put the .py. You have to type that in. Uh-huh. So do put that in. So we'll have plenty of opportunities to see what happens if you don't. I like to forget it a lot. OK, so here's our first Python program. Let's do it. First, we, go, we got to always have some comments, right? So Python has an interesting way to do comments, just line comments. I can do um, a hashtag or a pound sign symbol. Now, if I want to do a whole block of comments, though, I can do three single quotes. And then everything between these three single quotes and the next three that I type will be a block comment. So I'm going to do the three single quotes. Let me see if I can. I've got it up to font size. Hang on. Making it a bit little bigger for you guys to hopefully see. That should be big enough. All right, so I've got my three quotes, and I'm just going to say this script is going to be Hello World. The developer is going to be you. So doing the same thing. Each of those are. So it's you. So go to um, use Note, Notepad++ to enter it, and then we'll get it executed somehow. It's got to be something on your H drive. We'll find it. OK, so we've started out with our comments. Let's put our date. And our purpose is just to say hello. Now I'll do those three closing tick marks or single quotes. And that should end my block comment. That would be my header comment for my Python program. We're going to have more comment than program or script in this one. So all we really want to do is print out that message. So just exactly the same as it was working with that command interpreter. We can just say hello world. Now we, we are able to run this within idle. So if you look at your manuals, you'll see the run command. And we want to choose run module. It'll make us save usually. OK. And then we'll see the command interpreter with our output. So yay. No, no. <laughs> Just taking your head like, no. Oh, you got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Are you guys still working? Yay. Right. Uh -huh. Try to be super helpful to you. So you can get yeah, different things. So get rid of it. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Okay. Sometimes. 
No, it's it's high. Okay, so we got our first program written. Now, where is our program file at? Right now, my Python interpreter screen is kind of taken up my whole window. And if you look at the different things that are open for idle, I have the Python shell, which is that interpreter thing that I'm looking at, and then my hello world dot py file and that would be my program so it, you, we can have a lot of different files open all at once as we're working with things so let's make a program that has a little bit more involved or a script i need to say script so i'm going to close that one our hello world program is closed now it's saved out there on your h drive or wherever you saved it and don't forget it's a great place to go for examples, you're gonna have this example code that you've got saved, so refer to it, just kind of like your example pseudocode. But with another thing that we could do to help us, let's open a Word document. Word is kinda <clears throat> spiteful to use for this, but we'll try. So in Word, I'd like to create our own Python quick reference. Because you guys have, you'll find lots and lots of Python references available. But sometimes it's nice just to have something in your own words that can help you. So in order to do that, I want to insert a table. I think I'm just going to do like a couple columns, but a bunch of rows, maybe three columns. We'll decide as we go. Now I think that. I want this to be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna set my font up a little bit. You guys don't, you may not want to, but I want you guys to be able to see mine. So the first thing then that I'm thinking of, about is this Python print command. So we saw that it was print, and then in parentheses, we have what we wanna print. Now this is where Word is kind of a pain. You have to change that P to a lowercase or turn off auto, correct or whatever to get it to not capitalize that. And we don't want that P capitalized. If we were to capitalize that P, Python wouldn't know what our command was because Python is very case sensitive. So it totally is gonna be affected by that. So within the parentheses is the info to print. So we might have something like hello world be within our parentheses if we wanted to print that string. So if we put that all together, we would have print hello world. So you might want an example like that in your quick reference. Maybe here in this first column, underneath this print command, maybe we wanna make it a different color I'll make mine green and I'll put print hello world as an example so that I have some sample code there. <laughs> now you guys know when we started doing pseudocode, we started out with writing out some prompt that was just a string like this, but then we very quickly had to add in 
What if we want a variable to print out with this prompt or with our message? And so we saw that we could concatenate using that plus sign. We could add more information. So we need to do that with Python too in our print command because we know that's something that we'll have to do often. So let's keep our quick reference open. I'll go ahead and save it. So again, I'm going to save this on my H drive in my same folder where I keep my Python code. And I'm going to name it Python Quick Reference. And like I said, any sort of <coughs> way that you want to format things that you think is helpful to you is going to be the best way to format it. As you learn different languages, if you create, create some sort of file like this, a quick reference file for your different languages with just some real quick syntax examples, you'll be able to jump back and forth a little bit easier than without it. It's kind of a struggle. All righty. So a quick reference is done. Let's create a Python program that actually asks for some information and then prints it out. So I want to create another new file. I'm going to go to idle, create a file, new file, then I'm going to save it. Now, when I click save in idle, I got on this and then got off of it. By default, it's putting me in the program file of the Python directory. If I were to save right here, I could accidentally save my file with the same name as a real file that's part of Python, and I could break <coughs> Python. Because right? if I named my file python.py, I just broke Python on this computer because now it's going to find my file instead of the real one. So never save into this Python folder. Always go to your H drive or some other safe place. If you see someone doing it, you can um, laugh if they break things for a while, but then remind them that's what they did. So I got to go find my H drive because it's not very good at keeping track of where I was. And this one, we're going to call it, let's call it Hello Movie and it'll stay together. Dot PY. So in this program, our script file. Oh, there it's doing it. This was, Brittany's was doing this back in the back. Sometimes when you're working with idle, it'll try to be helpful, kind of like Raptor, and give you some suggestions. So you can try working with that if you like. Idle is actually pretty clunky. We'll only use it for a week or two and we'll switch to a different editor because this one will really make everybody mad. If it pops up like this, you can press escape or press the space bar to kind of make it go away, but you can see mine is being really persistent. I had to click on it. So it's just trying to be helpful for you. Now our script we decided is going to be named Hello Movie. That's a great name. Even that thing to me there. Stop it. Our date is 2.21. I can't believe it. And our purpose, let's say we're going to say hello and ask for favorite movie. And then I'm going to do the three single quotes to end my comment block. So first I want to print out a message, just kind of a welcome message. Let's say something like, hello, welcome to our Python script. <laughs> now after we print out that message, we want to ask for input. Let's ask them what their favorite movie is because 
your assignment is to ask someone what their name is and print that out. So we're not going to do that. We're going to ask what their favorite movie is instead and print that information out. Well, whenever we are working with prompting the user, in our pseudocode, we use a write statement and put the prompt out and then an input statement to say what variable we wanted to save that input in. And we saw in Raptor, we could put those all together into one symbol, that input symbol that had the prompt and the variable name in it all together. Python lets us do that. So let's us put it all together by using the input command. So we have to start out with the variable that we would like to use. I'm going to back up a little bit and I'm going to say that I want to declare a variable in our Python code. Remember I use that hashtag symbol as a line comment. So our variable here is going to be fave movie and I want to set it equal to just being an empty string. So just like Raptor, Python does not care if I declare my variables or not. Doesn't care. It would figure it out and declare it for me. But because we want to start out with our good programming practices, we're going to go ahead and declare that variable and then use it later. So now that we've got our variable declared, let's use it. We're going to say we want our favorite movie variable to be filled in by the input command. Now the input command looks just a lot like the print command. It's followed by parentheses, and inside the parentheses is the data that we want to use is the prompt for our input. So we can say something like, what is your favorite movie? So that one line of code is going to take care of both the write and the input from our pseudocode. So whatever our user types in as their favorite movie, we're going to save in that fave movie variable. So now we can print everything out. We'll say, thank you, your favorite movie is, I'm going to leave my space and do a plus to indicate that I want to add or concatenate to the output. <coughs> Oops. Now I do have extra closing double quotes, which we don't want. So notice how um, idle isn't the greatest, but it is doing some color coding for us. Everything that we have within our double quotes is turning green. So that helps us identify that string that we can tell we've got the beginning and the ending of the string set right. The variables are turning black. The comments, the single line comments are red and our multi-line comments are green along with our strings. So it's very Christmassy. The print and input, if you notice the Python commands are being color coded in purple. So we can kind of get a feel as we use idle that things are right. You know that our code is right, it's being interpreted correctly. So now let's run our program. Save it. We should see our hello message. So what is your favorite movie? I don't know. What's a good movie? I can't think of any movie names. My family, which one? I love Cars. My family makes fun of me. Thank you, your favorite movie is Cars. Okay, good, so is yours working? Everybody working? We want this one working because this is pretty much what your assignment is. You wanna get it out of the way. Everybody good? good. Awesome. All right, so now we need to up update our quick reference. So for our print command, we saw that we could also do print hello plus a variable, and we could concatenate. Now, in the same way, of course, just like any other language or anything, we could do print variable plus hello. Remember, we don't have to start what's inside these parentheses with double quotes. 
We just are doing that for these ones because we've started with the string. So we could have the first thing be our variable name there, either way. So whatever else you wanna say about that print statement, put that in your notes. Now, the next thing that we need is our input statement. So we saw our input statement, again, expects to have open and close parentheses. And within the open and close parentheses is the prompt, our input prompt. So I could say input, enter number. <coughs> And that would be an example. But then we saw that with our input statement, we need a variable to save the data. And that way we've got everything saved then in that variable. One thing though for our input that we're seeing right now is We've asked for a string, because I asked for their favorite movie. We haven't asked yet for a number. So let's try that before we save this program. So I'm going to go back to my hello movie.py file and I want to add a little bit more before I print out the output so I'm going to add some blank lines there and what I want first is going to be a variable for the number of times they've watched it we we'll call it num times and let's set it equal to zero because this is going to be a number Now for our num times variable, we'll use our input statement to prompt them and we'll say how many times have you watched it? I'm going to put a space after both of these question marks because I didn't like the way that answer was squished up against that first one last time. So beside having our num times variable, let's create a couple others. Let's do um, average time. What, how about we'll say the average time for a movie is two hours and we'll call it time lost. Just because we wanna do a calculation here in our program. So I'm going to do that calculation. Let's put some comments here in our code. We're already getting kind of long with you guys' program. First of all, we're going to have our prompts for input. And then we're going to do our calculation. But we only have one, right? So our calculation, we're going to say that the time lost for this movie is the number of times they've watched it times the average time in the movie. And again, we just want to have some sort of calculation in here so that you guys can see how to do that with Python. I think that all the time that I've lost watching cars was valuable time. <laughs> I needed to watch cars. <laughs> I could not have appreciated my trip to the Grand Canyon as much without it. All right, so let's add another output. I'm gonna say, besides saying your favorite movie is, let's say you have lost and then I wanna add time lost and then hours to this movie. Now we're gonna have some trouble because there are some things that we're gonna to have to do here because 
we're switching back and forth a little bit. First of all, our input command expects our user to give us a string, and we're wanting to use this as a number. So we're gonna have some trouble there, just letting you know. <coughs> then, down here when we print things out, when Python sees these plus signs, it's gonna be like, seriously, string, number string, you want me to add those? And it's gonna to try to add them and it's not gonna. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit both of these areas to fix things. What we're gonna do is do some casting. So let's run it so you see those error messages. Because you should never ever be afraid of error messages. They just give you an option to fix your program. Okay, so that one is ugly. What's it saying? Unexpected EOF. It hit the end of this file before it was expecting to. So I'm missing something at the very end. Can you tell what it is? Close parentheses. Now, notice it didn't say close your parentheses. It just was like, oh, I hit the end and don't know what's going on. All right, so I'll fix that one. Now let's run again. Oh, now it's happy with me. If you have more syntax errors, you might have some things to figure out. What is your favorite movie? Well, I still, I'm liking Cars. I, I've only watched it, I don't know, four or five times. Whoa, that's not right. It's doing adding, isn't it? It's taking that number and, and doubling it, so it's not right at all. So what's happening is, let's take a look at it. <coughs> It's saying that the number of times variable is a string, and when we multiply it by two, it gives us that string twice. So it says whatever that number was, you'll get it. So we need to tell Python to change this input into a number. Let's say we want to make it an integer. So we can do that by putting int in front of our input. But then int, the input to int has to be enclosed within parentheses. So we have to add a new set of parentheses. So now we're saying, use the input command, displaying this message. Whatever you get from the input command, run it through this int command to make it into an integer. Now let's run and see what kind of output we get. So we didn't get any errors but we didn't have the right output. There we go, now we get a, an error, a runtime error. It says that, huh, what line is my error on? <coughs> line 22 in my code, and it says that I have a type error it's saying that whatever it's upset about must be a string, not an integer. Well, it's because we're trying to print, and we did string, integer, string. So again, we need to do that same casting to, to turn that time lost back into a string. So I'm gonna do it with my print statement. I'm just gonna put, str in front of our time lost to convert it to a string or cast it as a string and then put the parentheses around our variable name to say this is what we want to convert to a string. So now this is kind of big stuff for your first day because you're doing great. I'm going to run this and save it and then you're going to have a whole bunch of example code to look at more than you need. <laughs> Okay, so my output is way down here. You can see it. Here's my favorite movie, Cars. Watch it three times. I'll change it every time. Oh, now I'm getting the right output. So now it says I've lost six hours to this movie, which is correct for what we were thinking with it. So is everybody's working okay? That's so good. Let's save it. Let's close it. Now, send that home if you need to. Email it to yourself. Save it to your OneDrive if you want to, so that all of your stuff is accessible in both places.
however you want to do it because in our class we won't really be doing any sort of cloud-based things for you to worry to save your code so I'll let you kind of send things back and forth but our files are pretty small and it should be okay to send them back and forth now we saw from our our statement there that we should update our notes a little bit more <coughs> if we want to convert something to an integer we use that int command so convert whatever is inside the parentheses to integer so for my example I'm going to put int and then input enter number and two closing parentheses. And then we saw str will convert whatever is inside the parentheses to a string. So for that one, we just did str and then our variable. Now remember with Python and that command interpreter, you can try anything that you want to try. It's not going to hurt anything at all. The worst thing that could happen now that I've seen is if you accidentally save something to that Python folder, you can mess up the Python install on your computer. So what would you do? Download Python again, install it again, and worry about it because it's not going to hurt anything. So one of the biggest issues that new programmers have is being afraid to try stuff. So just try stuff. That's, that's the best way to learn things, see what happens. Discuss it with somebody else. I tried this and this weird thing happens. You think that's right? Because sometimes it might not be. Oh, man, you guys have seen so much. Okay, I'm going to close this. Save it all. Okay, so we saw that you're going to be downloading Python 3.6. You're going to go to python.org and it's out here but because Python is open source you can just download it and it's free and you can use it and there's not any sort of charge or anything associated with that you just might need to find here on python.org find the location to download a specific version so that you can get the 3.6 version that we're using so you're going to do that at home. So now, getting started with Python, there's a lot of training resources available. There's a couple that I'd like you to try. The first one, let's go to Code Academy. So I'm looking at week six in Canvas, and this link here will take you to the Code Academy website. You don't need this link. You can just find Code Academy on a web browser. It's available. But if you're here in Canvas, there is a link for it. So Code Academy is a training site for programmers. And it's one of those things where a few years ago when it first started, it was all free. But everybody knew, you know, they're going to start charging. They're good. And they have. They've started charging a lot. So only do free stuff. Okay, there's nothing on here that I want you to do that costs money. If it says it costs money, don't do it unless you feel like it's a good investment and you want to. But let's create an account. And if you've used it, whoops, if you've used it before, you can use the same account. It's really nice. I don't know how I have all these badges it's from starting things like that. Oh, 
once you get an account created, we want to go to the catalog. And in the catalog, they have things organized a bunch of different ways, but we really just want to go to Python. All of these intensive programs cost money. Lots of money. They're doing really well with their Code Academy website. Oh, uh, and see what they did when they upgraded to the new version of Python. They made it a paid one. So we're going to have to be, you know, low lives and use the free Python 2 version. So if you found it, we want this Learn Python 2. And I swear it's going to be okay because the only thing that's a problem is going to be those parentheses around those print statements. Now, how this is, works is it's pretty cool when you go into the Code Academy. Let's start it with section one. They give you instructions <coughs> over on the side. And then here in the middle, you have your console screen where you're typing your code and running your code. And then over here, if you have your output, so you can see everything all together. And then as you're looking at the instructions, there's places where you can like get a hint or find out a little bit more. There's even some links on here like to ask questions if you run into a bad spot where you don't know what to do. And so there's lots of great things. So let's see what it wants us to do this very first one. Um, in Python, we use print, a print statement. So using the print statement, output a message of your choosing to the terminal. So we're going to click here and print. Here is a 2.7 print statement. And then I can run that. I just clicked. Uh -huh. So it lets you click there. Okay, so now you've got your print statement in the middle. When you click run, you should see your output. So it's just kind of handier. You know, it's not much different than what we're doing on the, our machine, but it's got everything all built together, so it'll keep you on track. Now, once something is right, you can click next, and it'll take you to the next instructions. Now they say print something use on, using Python 3's syntax. So you can tell this difference is a really big deal. But even though it's a very small difference, here is Python 3. And I can run that. And it's happy with me. Next. I think my YouTube video is still going. Something's going. <laughs> All right, so with Python, if you look down at the bottom corner and click down here, you'll see a menu that shows you the whole course progress where you are. And as you go through it, there's going to be different options and different things that it gives you. We just want to get through uh, the first few. So 
So this lesson gives you all of the intro things that you'll be wanting to get through. Right now, I think our due date is set to Tuesday. No, next Thursday, right? So I change them all to Thursday for this Python Code Academy module. Let's take a look at it in Canvas. You can leave it open. But I want to have you through. Here's the assignment. Now, besides Code Academy for this assignment, you do need to do a little bit of other research. So don't miss these questions because they're not a lot, but they are some points here that I can give you. So you're going to answer these questions. You're going to do unit one and unit two of the Python course and give me some screenshots in the Word document to know that you're done with those modules. If you keep going, that's great. The Code Academy will do the first few modules. Yes, sir? Module of lessons. That's what I'm trying to see if they, it looks like they've changed things. Can you tell? Because that, that list that I'm looking at doesn't look the same. Because the list you brought up was the lessons. Because that one should be lesson one. Yeah, so we want, and I don't know where it'll, if it's going to show it to you in your completion window, but lesson one that's Python syntax and lesson two that strings and console output. But if they're changing things, it might be hard to find them. If you start getting to decision making your statements, you're done. You're too far. We're going to do that next. So conditionals, that's where we want to stop. So up to that point, because it looks like there's two different schemes here going on. They're always making it fun for us. So that's fun for you guys. Do Code Academy. Now Code Academy we'll see how things progress as they make things chargeable, costing money, because it's been something that's been really, really handy and really useful to students for a lot of different things. But now they're starting to charge for a lot of them. So we may not be able to use it as much as we had in the past because it was just great open source. So Code Academy is all fancy. Yes, sir? Yeah, then you guys would have to pay more bookstore fees. So we have so many cool books. There's so many different Python resources. Do I? Generally, it's still cheaper than Probably. That's true. If they even offer it, mm -hmm. to check into it. See what they can do. Yeah. Now, our next site that's not near as glitzy and glam is this how to think like a computer scientist. I told you I was gonna take you to lots of places today. So this is another assignment, let's check into it. This is the RuneStone Academy. So I'm gonna click on this link, Tutor RuneStone Academy. And again. So this is the opposite. <coughs> now, I'm already logged in, so it's taking me to this course selection. You're gonna to have to create an account. So create an account. Their website is not near as fancy, nor work near as well as Code Academy. So you might have to go to, back to the link and come back again to get to the right stuff. But what we want to join when you finally get the option is this CIS 120. It's definitely talking. So Code Academy is great, it's glitzy, it's glam, and it just teaches you like little pieces of code. It has you practice little pieces. So 
sometimes it has you pull it all together, but not very often. They're more like just practice. This is an if statement. It gives you like 75 if statements to practice. Runestone Academy is not as glitzy and glam as Code Academy, but they give you more full examples to practice with. So there's good things and bad things about both of them. I'm gonna to try to get into this one. Now the thing about the Runestone Academy, since it's not very glitzy and glam, you might have trouble getting logged in and things like that because it is just a website where volunteers try to keep it up and running to give information to students. Now hopefully once you get logged on, you'll see this table of contents of this free open source book that is kind of running this website. Yes, sir. CIS 120, do you have the CIS of capital? <coughs> Won't let you do it. Okay, so not near as cute. There are some assignments out here. If you look at the person, oh no, right here under this word table of contents. Do you see this word assignments? Click on it. That's the one we want. So we are looking at week six. We want section one and section two. Now for the Runestone Academy, just like Code Academy, you're gonna turn it in in Canvas to let me know that you're done. Canvas is like our central location. All of these other sites are just peripheral. So you always have to go back to Canvas to do the assignment to tell me you got it done because otherwise I won't know. But with Runestone, I can look at your scores on the site so you don't have to give me other, any other information just that you're done. Now, the way this one works is really cute. I like it. If we start out with um, executing Python in this book, I'm just gonna skip and click to that one. It has this little Python program right here in screen in the book. It says print these. You can actually run it right here. And then it'll show you the output. You also can use this really cool facility they have called the Code Lens. So I can click on this button, Show in Code Lens, and that'll open up this site where I can step through the lines of code using the forward button and see exactly what's happening in each line of code. So this first program, it doesn't give us a lot of great information, but as we get to more involved programs, it can be super, super helpful because it shows us what's happening in memory over here. So it shows us what variables are being allocated and all of that kind of good stuff over there. So you can have some neat things in the runestone. Okay, so lots. Python 3.6 is our Python. Idle is our editor for right now. We're gonna use Code Academy for those first two lessons and Runestone Academy for those first two lessons. So sh you should see a lot of the same kind of material. So questions about it, got a lot. So I'm gonna give you some lab time, yes ma'am? So what assignments are we supposed to complete in Runestone Academy? The week six those, ones. Yeah, the week six ones. It's, mm -hmm. it's modules, it's the first two lessons or first two assignments also. So you should see a lot of the same words repeated, give you a little bit. But let me know if you run into any issues or something won't work, but lab time so that you can get some of that done. Um, you're welcome to get out of here if you would rather do it someplace else if you want to work on it here. That's great too, just totally up to you. Mm -hmm. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. So they'll go really, really quick.
Did I? Oh, well, I think I forgot to do the form. I forgot to do the hands on for the mixing. Uh -huh. I thought the hands on was the, at the bottom of uh -huh. the. There's so many things I know. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was at the bottom of the regular test. Just give you all these things. <laughs> so, you should be okay, right? Because it'll drop on, on your lowest score out of that category. So. When, when I take the hands on stuff? It'll drop your lowest score out of that category. Right. So since it's a zero, it'll drop that score. But no, it's too late to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> Wait till leave, sir. I took the whole week off, so I am not going to go to work on Friday. Yeah. 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 So that really huge pre-calc test that I did that I thought I would be on paid money. I was so stoked. I'm seriously like the October and sorry to go back to it with that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 
was going to have any holidays, I didn't have a bonus that check. I get a bonus every single check, so I usually don't know one of those. Okay, so we're going to have a bonus that are usually like, I would say $5,000 to $1,000 on top of my hourly pay. But so, I don't think it's a nice shit because um, in Missouri, the only thing is the commission is just kind of like the same information that works. But I still don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the last one. I don't know if it's a good 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 one. Ever since my accident, my 
over um, and raise dirty bugs. I never thought of these also as it's like very many really bit of a drive to go so far. Yeah, I mean, you go over a lot of times and you don't even say that much. Yeah, so I'm like, ugh. That was just in March last year. But I'm sure I'll get over it. <laughs> I need to get over it. So I'm thinking of you as a single left left side. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm still scared to go down. I have 44 left. Mm -hmm. oh, I have some trouble for you. I really need to go and do it. <laughs> I know there's a I think we can really make a short Just been exhausted all week. I don't understand. <laughs> You're working for something now. Just don't yeah. forget. Okay, worth it. Okay. Well, thank you. In one week? Goodness. That whole row back there behind you guys, what are we going to do with them? They're going to be a big pain. See ya.